Megan with Hip Stitch Academy and I've got another video. I'm going to put together some sky shorts. Um, this is a free pattern from Peppermint Magazine. The pattern was actually designed by Make With Mandy. I've never made these shorts before. I'm not really a shorts person. However, it's been really warm this summer here in the Catskills and it's only beginning of August, so I imagine it will be hot for the rest of the month. So I'm gonna make some shorts because you can't wear a dress every day. I guess you could, but these look fun. They're loose, they're flowy. You can't beat the free pattern. Love Peppermint Magazine. If you haven't been over there, they have a whole slew of free patterns. I've done a few videos, um, some lives actually, where I teach the project in a live sewing class and the video quality is not great. Not that this video quality is super great. I'm working on it, people. But um, anyway, stay tuned because we are going to make these sky shorts. I got to figure out what the fabric I'm going to make them out of. Uh, keep watching. Let's do this. All right, we got our front shorts. I'm gonna make those not quite as big. Back shorts, same thing. I'm folding in that inner leg because it's just way too big. Back waistband, front waistband. That other piece was the pocket. This is the back pocket. Time to cut these things out. Glad I've got lots of <laughs> scissors. Uh, when you're a sewing teacher, you collect a lot of scissors. They make great pattern weights. Okay, so I failed to mention before that the fabric is doubled. It is, selvages are together. I happen to be using about a 55 inch wide fabric. The other reason I cut the uh, inner leg seam off a little bit is it wouldn't fit onto the fabric, but in looking at the pattern, I could tell it's gonna be way too much fabric in the leg, so that's why I folded that bit in. and. As I suspected, there's more than enough fabric in the um, in the legs, so I was happy that I did that. You may want to consider that as well. <clears throat> so each of these pieces uh, get cut out twice, so I can place all of them on the doubled fabric and cut them out. Honestly, you know, my whole thing about following the pattern and the way that they put pattern pieces on the fabric I don't always follow it because sometimes I feel like I can save more fabric than even the pattern suggests and I get why they do what they do. Um, but for this one, you need two pieces of everything so you can kind of just make sure everything's going the, the same grain. With wovens, you can go vertical, I usually go vertical grain. If for some reason you need to go horizontal, that's okay too, just make it consistent. So. Here are all my pieces cut out. I do need to interface this front waistband piece. So this is a pretty thin interfacing that I'm using. You don't want to go too stiff or it's going to look funny. Um, so I've got that. Okay, so here is my sky shorts front. I'm measuring how far down the pattern piece marks the pocket because that's going to be the length of this little interfacing that I'm gonna make. The width, I'm gonna just check this pattern real quick. It's right on the pattern, the measurement of the width. Okay, so that's one inch. So I'm making two pieces the height of what's marked on the pattern for the pocket, and it's gonna change by size, by one inch. So it's just a rectangle, and these rectangles are going to get ironed to the wrong side of the shorts front along that side angled edge. This is just gonna make so your pocket doesn't droop um, when you add the pocket pieces on. So I'm ironing it to the wrong side. I know it's hard with a chambray, to tell what's going on but I will try to tell you so you know and obviously it's in the pattern instructions so ironing that on interfacing you don't have to really you know do anything special it's just 
holding the iron onto the interfacing till it sticks. So now I'm going to sew the pocket piece to that edge. Now the pocket piece and the edge of the shorts are going to get sewn together right sides facing. So the interfacing is now facing down and this is pattern E that gets sewn to it. I'm going to flip that pattern piece um, out, iron that flat on both sides. So that's pattern piece E for the pocket. There are two pattern pieces. So I wanted to make that distinction. Iron that and then that is going to get folded over and then you're going to top stitch on the pocket and on the seam allowance. So you don't see that on the front of the shorts, the top stitching. You're top stitching the seam allowance to the pocket. Then you're going to take piece F, which is the other pocket piece, and I want you to line up right sides together and line up the rounded edges together. So there's only one combination that's going to work correctly. So once you have uh, lined that up and pinned it, you're going to go ahead and sew the rounded edge, just what I'm pinning here, and I'll show you the sewing step coming up. So here you're just sewing the two layers of pockets. Be careful to make sure there's nothing else underneath when you sew along this curve that you just pinned. Two layers of fabric, pocket E piece and pocket F piece, getting sewn together along that curved edge. All right, so once that's all kind of tucked in nicely, you want to make that straight edge of the pocket along the straight edge of the shorts, along the top and along the side. And then you're going to base just where everything overlaps at the top, kind of where just where I'm pinning right now. Do a little baste a quarter inch from the edge at the top. Do a little baste a quarter inch from the edge along the side. That's just going to secure your pocket into place. It's a little wonky on the sides, I noticed. Um, I don't think I did anything wrong. I just think it's sort of the way it's laying. So don't stress too much. Again, these shorts are very oversized. So if you wind up having to take a slightly larger seam allowance along the side later, it's going to be just fine. All right, so that's the basting done. Now that's your front piece with pocket. Now what I'm doing is taking the back piece and the pocketed uh, front piece and laying them right sides together and pinning along this inner leg seam. Now you will notice that these pieces are not gonna line up, but that's okay. You're just sewing the inner leg seam. That will line up. So do that on both short legs. This is a very short seam because these are shorts. Normally you'd be going down to your ankle, but they're shorts. Then open that up. Open the one you did first up so it's right side up and take the other one and lay it on top, right sides facing down. And I want you to match up this inner leg seam first. Match that up and pin it and then you can start at the edge and work your way towards the middle. Then you can work your way around the other side. This should match up perfectly because when you cut it, it was doubled. So everything should match up perfectly. It's important to get that inner leg seam matching up. Now go ahead and sew that curve that you just pinned. It's a big, long, mountainous curve and you're going to sew it. And as soon as you get done, sew it again. I always sew this seam twice. It's the, you know, butt crotch seam gets a lot of wear and tear. Now this part is a little confusing. You kind of have to flip things around so that inner leg seam is now in the middle. I flipped it around to sort of show you what's gonna happen, but now it's right, we need to get it right sides together. So I flip it inside out. And what you want to do is now do the side seams of the shorts. So along this right edge, it starts with where the pocket is sewn on. 
and it should line right up with the back edge. Now this is where I was showing you was kind of wonky. I've got this like extra piece. So I just trimmed that off knowing it would straighten out the side and then line up with the back better. So that's what I just did there. Pin that together. And they're gonna look huge at this point because this is an elasticated waist. So don't stress. Um, now on the left side, same thing. I try to make my pins so the ball of the pins are hanging off the fabric and then it's super easy to pull them out. And again, I've got this weird extra piece that I'm just gonna trim off. Um, and like I said, it really doesn't matter a whole lot because even if you were to take a slightly larger seam allowance, they're still gonna fit. These are kind of oversized shorts. So now I'm just using about a 5 8 inch seam allowance here. That's mostly what I'm using for these entire shorts. I think that's what the pattern says. I'm not sure, but that's what I'm doing. So I'm sewing along the right side, flipping it around and sewing it along the left side of the shorts. So this will then have your shorts part finished up. Then we just have to work on the waistband. Now, I know a lot of people don't have sergers, so that's why I wanted to show you what I'm doing to finish my seams. I'm just grabbing my pinking shears and cutting along all the edges that I sewed. So just very carefully without cutting my seam, I'm just cleaning everything up with the pinking shears. And what that does is it makes it want to, um, like when you wash it, it'll just run less or um, unravel. The fabric will unravel less if you've pinked the seams. Basically, it cuts it at an angle and makes it unravel less. It's still going to unravel a little bit, but um, it does clean up everything. So I like to do that. All right, so here I'm just ironing on the interfacing to one of my front waistbands. The other one does not get interfacing. So usually I'll iron the interfacing to the fabric with the iron on the interfacing, then I'll flip it, get out any weird wrinkles, and then re-iron. So that just makes it super secure. All right, so what's happening with these um, waistbands is the first step is that you're going to sew with right sides together the two waistband pieces along the top curve. This is going to be the shorter curve and we're gonna sew along that edge. Now I'm going to open up the seam that I sewed and sew on the right side. I'm going to sew um, the seam allowance to the waistband that's not interfaced. Now take your uh, back waistband piece and your front waistband piece that's opened up and pin the short sides together. They should be around the same height. Pin those together and with a 5 8 and 8 inch seam allowance, sew each side together. There's no interfacing on your back waistband, just one of the pieces of your front waistband. So basically the waistband was twice as tall as it's going to be. Now we're going to fold it to the size that it's going to be on the shorts. So it's like two layers now. So that front waistband is the curved one. The back waistband is straight with no interfacing on it. Press it and it's, it's wrong sides together, pressed. Um, and now we've got this gigantic waistband um, that will be elastic in the back. So get that elastic piece. There's a formula in the instructions to get the correct um, measurement, but it's basically from hip to hip and then like subtract a couple of inches so that when you stretch the piece of elastic from hip to hip, it has to stretch a little bit. Then I've marked four spots. I marked the middle, I marked a quarter of the way, and I marked three quarters of the way on the elastic. And now I'm doing that 
exact same thing with the back of the waistband. So I find the middle of the back of the waistband and then a quarter of the way and three quarters of the way. Those pins are all gonna line up so the amount of the elastic is stretched proportionately along the back. Now I'm gonna pin the ends of the elastic to the seam allowances where you sewed the front waistband to the back waistband. So, I'm, so it's basically the elastic's way shorter than the um, back waistband. I pin the ends, I pin a quarter of the way, halfway, three quarters of the way, and then there's the same uh, amount that it needs to be stretched eventually. So I'm just gonna sew the ends. I sew the end of the elastic to that seam allowance so you don't see it. And I do that pretty securely. I think I sewed it three times. Then I'm gonna sew the elastic to the back of the waistband. So the elastic is um, kind of like just along the halfway point of that waistband. And I'm just sewing it to the waistband that's gonna be on the inside. So that kind of helps when you go to flip everything right side out. But before we flip everything right side out, we're going to pin the waistband to our shorts. So I'm turning the shorts so they are right side out and then I'm gonna pin the middle of the shorts waistband to the middle of the shorts. Uh, and then the whole front waistband is going to match up with the front of the shorts, because that's not elasticated. So you should be able to match that up without too much gapping and gathering. So I pin the middle, I pin the side, I pin the other side and kind of work my way in there. And it should fit pretty well if you've had consistent seam allowances. Now you've got to get the back and that's the part that you're really going to have to stretch. So I kind of had set that up weird so I tucked the shorts through. But basically now the fabric uh, should fit but the elastic will be kind of weirdly sucking in the shorts if that makes any sense so the fabric kind of aligns with the top of the fabric of the shorts but then while you sew it it's going to automatically stretch out the elastic so you've got your right sides together everything's pinned i want you to sew around the entire waistband here um, and, and that's what's really cool about these shorts is because you don't actually have to stretch the elastic as you go because I've tacked it down. It's going to automatically kind of bring it in once we do the next step where we flip uh, the waistband so wrong sides are together. Anyway, it's going to all make sense. And I think that's what's kind of genius about this shorts pattern, to be honest. So here we go, we've got the waistband flipping to the inside of the shorts and I'm pinning along the top just to kind of get started. Um, and then same thing, but this is where it's gonna scrunch in. So I'm just pinning the, t the raw edge of the waistbands together. And yes, that is gonna be a raw edge, it's not gonna be a finished edge. You can serge it or you, I just use the pinking shears after I sew it, but it's a raw edge and I'm just pinning it all the way around. And it's all gonna fit together. It's gonna scrunch in because of, the, because of the elastic again, but fabric to fabric, everything is going to match up all the way around. And then once that's all pinned, you guessed it, <laughs> you're gonna sew it. Okay, so try while you're sewing it to kind of stretch out the elastic. You're not stretching the fabric, obviously, you're just stretching out the elastic and the elastic is gonna wind up encased in the back of the waistband. So as I go, every time I stop, my needle's down so I can kind of stretch out the elastic. The front, you're not gonna need to stretch out because that's just a flat front waistband, which is also pretty great. Um, I was just thinking about this and like, I don't think that, I think this would be kind of a cute pants pattern if you just sort of elongated uh, the shorts. I might try these as pants for the fall. Anyway, there is that raw edge. 
again, I'm going to grab my pinking shears and just really carefully go around. You've got to be super careful that you're not cutting a layer of fabric that you're not supposed to. So just go slow when you use the pinking shears. And even if you don't have pinking shears, you could just do this with regular scissors just to clean up that seam allowance a little bit if you wanted. Um, you could also probably top stitch that once it's, if you don't have the pinking shears, you could kind of do it with scissors and then iron it down and even top stitch it and that kind of finishes off the edge a little. I don't do that in this video, but it's an option. And then obviously if you have a serger, you could just serge it. All right. So cleaning up that edge, these are looking pretty good. So there you have the back waistband and the tacking it down is, is just essential because then everything, nothing gets flipped in the elastic. I feel like if you don't sometimes tack the elastic down, it'll flip on you and you're always fixing it. So all that's left is hemming it here, folks. So I'm just taking each pant leg and you can see the pant leg or the shorts leg, whatever, um, is enormous. And this was even, I made it smaller. So keep that in mind when you go and do yours. Like, um, it, you know, obviously it's supposed to be this big baggy pant leg, but also I think it's a little bit too big. So just turning that bottom edge in a quarter of an inch towards the wrong side all the way around. And then I'm going to do it a second time. So we want two quarter inch folds with the iron. The iron makes it so you don't even need any pins. And you're doing this on both of the short legs. I'm trying to go into like high speed mode here so we can um, get that done. But that's what's happening here. And then you're just going to sew it with like a right on the edge of the hem. Okay, so I tried to zoom in a little bit so you could sort of see the edge of what I'm actually sewing. So it's not the edge of the shorts, it's the edge of the quarter, the two quarter inch folds. You're going to stay right along that folded edge so that the hem doesn't flip down on you later. Um, so going slow, I'm actually sewing on the right side, I think. Um, because it tends to look nicer, but you can sew on the wrong side. It doesn't really matter. Um, and I just matched my thread really well too. So, all right, same thing on the other pant leg. And then these babies are finished.